Watching your favorite TV shows and movies in true theatrical surround sound doesn't have to cost a fortune. And to prove it, we're putting together five complete home theater systems for under $2,500. Let's do this. Before we get started, let's set a few ground rules. We are going to be building a 5.1 system because they are the most common and can take advantage of all types of content, be it physical media, think Blu-rays and DVDs, as well as streaming. All of these setups will be Dolby Atmos compatible and with a small added investment could include Dolby Atmos enabled upward firing or wall mounted Atmos speakers. No home theater is complete without a subwoofer, so every system that we are putting together today will also include a subwoofer. The only thing not included in our five setups is the display. So with all of that out of the way, let's get to building. <laughs> First up is the home theater setup that reignited my love for home theater and brought the topic to our channel. The best part about the Yamo S system is the fact that it is so damn affordable. To this day, I have yet to encounter a complete home theater package that manages to best the Yamo S803 with respect to value for money, build quality, and looks for less. I mean, nothing comes close. This 5.1 system is built around the S803 HCS speaker package, which includes five speakers, four bookshelves, and a matching center, all for three $349. Now, none of the speakers in the S803 set have a great deal of bass on their own. They actually have next to none. So for bass, we're adding the S810 subwoofer. And this thin designer sub may be basic in terms of features, but it works great, giving these speakers all the low end they will need without pissing off the neighbors. To power this small but mighty home theater is the Sony STR-DH790 receiver, the baby brother to another favorite of mine, the Sony 1080. The 790 offers much of the same performance as the 1080, only at a lower cost. Not to mention, you can still actually buy it. It doesn't have 8K or 4K 120 capability, but it literally has everything else, and all for less than 450 bucks. Set the system upright and get ready for a lively, punchy, and dynamic as hell sound. If you can get the sub set up right, the speakers shouldn't sound too thin or lean. Never sound warm, lush, or fuzzy either. So detail and intelligibility, they're going to be high with this setup. Keep the volume about 85 dB or lower, which is loud, and I doubt many of you will have much to complain about, especially when you consider the entire setup can be had for under $1,200. <laughs> Sticking with Yamo, what can I say? I'm a fan. Let's go a bit upmarket and get ourselves some tower speakers. And Yamo's C97 towers are so much fun and stylish as all hell. The best part is you can score a pair for less than 700 bucks. And no, that's not used, open box, or refurbished. That's new inbox with a full warranty. Add in the C9 center and a pair of C91 bookshelf speakers for surrounds, and you have a five speaker package that will absolutely impress. When you consider these five speakers will set you back just over a grand. I mean, come on. Now, a sub may not be 100% necessary for some of you when it comes to this system, but if you are all about that bass, I recommend the C910 subwoofer. This 10-inch sub is capable of surprising output with finish options that match the C97 towers. Best part is it retails for less than 180 bucks. For power, I'm going with the new Denon X1700H receiver, which is the baby brother to the X3700H we've already reviewed on this channel and that you know we love. You get a few less options and power with the 1700, but given the Yamo's relative friendliness, when it comes to amplifiers, you should be just fine with the 1700H. Throw in my favorite streamer, an Apple TV 4K, and you have got a killer and stylish home theater setup for just over 2100 bucks. And like our previous Yamo setup, you can expect a big, bold, dynamic sound from this setup that will put the theater in home theater. Run Odyssey Room EQ inside the Denon and brace yourself for a surprisingly fulfilling experience. <laughs> This next setup is a total sleeper and likely the most neutral or audiophile-like of all the setups on this list. Q Acoustics 3020i bookshelf speaker is one of those two-way speakers that doesn't get nearly enough love. They are stupid good and we're going to snag four of them for less than 700 bucks all in and pair them with the matching center, the 3090Ci at $249. Now these speakers need a sub, though they have enough mid-bass weight that when mated to a sub like the Klipsch R12SW at $199, they're not going to sound lean or cool. Instead, you should experience a rather linear, neutral sound that will pair well with a wide range of music and movie genres, even ones that may not be mixed to perfection. 
For power, I'm going with one of my favorite budget receivers, the Marantz NR1711. At 999, the 1711 has everything you really need to do home theater right in 2022. Plus, its slim profile and smaller stature means it's easy to hide away or place within or on most furniture. No nope, special AV stands or consoles required, which is nice. Toss in an Apple TV 4K for both music and movies, and you got a quality audiophile grade movie setup for less than $2,400. I would not be surprised if for many of you, this could be the first and last home theater setup that you will ever need. The JBL Stage A190 tower speaker is an absolute beast of a budget speaker. This tower is one of Christie's favorites and it's easy to see why. Punchy, rich, but controllable bass, a neutral and intelligible mid-range coupled with extended and detailed highs, sums up the 190s. And a pair will set you back less than 600 bucks. Yes, they are 299 each. Add a pair of Stage 130 bookshelf speakers for surrounds and a Stage 125 center, and you are in business. Now, you may not need a sub when it comes to this system, but if you want to add a sub, I recommend keeping it in the family and going with the A100P. Five stage speakers and the sub will run you less than 1200 bucks. Now, I found Found the stage speakers treble to be just a bit too extended for my taste, meaning the speakers just don't roll off quite as much as others. So I'm going to pair them with the slightly smooth Marantz NR1711, which we just spec'd in our last system. Marantz and JBL, in my experience, is a match made in audio heaven. And go ahead and comment down below if you agree. And the 1711 has enough juice to drive the stage speakers to perfection, not to mention it has preamp outs for the left and right main channels. So you can add a separate stereo amp down the road should you want to experiment with more power for those big towers. Add in, you guessed it, an Apple TV 4K and you've got a complete big boy home theater setup for less than 2400 bucks. <laughs> I am still in disbelief over just how good Kanto's YU passive speaker is for the money. Arguably one of the best affordable bookshelf speakers on the market right now. And you can snag five YU passives for $507. Actually, you're getting six for that price because they're sold in pairs. Because we've saved so much going with five matching bookshelf speakers in the YU passives, I am splurging on the subwoofer and getting an SVS SB1000 Pro, which is a bigger, less stylish version of my personal reference sub, the 3000 Micro. For power, I'm grabbing the awesome Onkyo 7100, which has the best room EQ solution built in, Dirac. Seriously, get all of the speakers and subwoofer placed in your room, run Dirac, and then maybe ask a friend or loved one to help you pick your jaw up off the floor. I'm going to go out on a limb and I'm going to say you are not ready for just how good a system like this can sound for less than $2,500 all in. So that's it. Those are my five home theater systems for under $2,500. Of course, you can always mix and match and save a bit of money here or there. The choice is yours. The point is, is to have fun with it because that's, that's what this hobby is all about. Fun. At the end of the day, I don't think you're going to walk away from any of these options disappointed. But what do you think, Christy? So I did put together two systems for Ooh, myself. You got a bonus two coming at yeah, you guys. Yeah, bonus two. Um, <laughs> now, now you're going to pit our viewers against either one of us. So well, let's they see if you beat me. They typically choose me anyway. <laughs> so. <laughs> all right. All right. I know you, I know you kind of tried hard to stay away from Klipsch products for mm -hmm. whatever reason. Um, but I, I went all in on Klipsch okay. for one of my, uh, systems. All right. Um, the speakers, my front mains are the brand new, 600M Mark IIs, $749 a pair. Mm -hmm. Sort of. Uh, Klipsch fatigue? Klipsch fatigue, yeah. yeah. I think the market has been saturated. Mm -hmm. oh, there's a ton of reviews mm -hmm. um, of, of Klipsch, and it makes sense. Now, one of the things that I have enjoyed more than just about anything we've ever done in this whole freaking experiment yeah. uh, with the channel is the installation of our in-ceiling speakers. Okay. What they can do with um, surround sound and like yeah. watching movies is really impressive. And it's just, it's just a game changer. Yeah. It's it nice. is so much fun. I just, I love them. So I've got two in-ceiling speakers 
Okay. Also from Klipsch. Okay. I'm going to link to it in the description. I found them for $99. Oh, wow. They're low profile, one inch silk dome tweeters with eight inch woofers. Damn. They have the swiveling track tricks horn thing. Mm-hmm. You know, they're good. Yeah, Plus, they're... they have the magnetic grills. Sure. Um, so bezel list, I'm sure. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. So I think it's a great deal. Yeah. And um, 100 bucks, absolutely. Yeah, 100 bucks each. They're, they're sold individually, so you will, you will need two of them. Okay. Um, then I would go with the older 600C center channel okay. speaker. The one we have. The one we have. Yeah. The old version. Yeah, you save a bunch C. of money on it. You can save a lot of money. Mm-hmm. It will blend well enough, in my opinion. If you run Odyssey or Dirac, it'll definitely blend almost perfectly. And I found one for $359. I think that's what we paid for it. Uh, so that's a great deal. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm putting a Yamo sub. Okay. The Klipsch subs you can get, but it's gonna, it would, it was gonna blow my budget. Okay. So the Yamo S810 subwoofer for at 169. Okay. We've used it before yeah. with Klipsch speakers. Mm-hmm. They work great together. Mm-hmm. Um, so I have full confidence that this would be a good sub for this system. Yeah. And it's and, not a sub that's gonna like, really rattle the foundation but it's going to give you that fullness that those speakers need for me again for me the (laughs) yamo subwoofer is great and i think i already mentioned that this would be paired with the marantz 1711 Mm -hmm. okay uh again that's that marant that um i don't know if i actually mentioned it but regardless it's the one i would put with this system Mm -hmm. it's um like i said it's really user friendly great for somebody that's new to this to home theater Mm -hmm. um it sounds great with a wide variety of speakers. So if you're ever going to change your speakers down the road, oh yeah, this is very versatile. It's it's good. It's, it's good really enough. good. Yeah. It's really good. So my system comes in at twenty four seventy six. Ooh, just under the wire. Just under. But, but I hey. think it's a very competent system. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> so my last system is based around Fluence. Ooh, gosh, I, you know, I spaced them. I spaced them. That's okay. That's what I'm here for. (laughs) (laughs) Okay, hit me with it. Fluence makes a really, really good bookshelf speaker. It's called the XL8. Mm -hmm. Um, They are crazy affordable. Like, you can get uh, a a pair for... $179? Maybe then, maybe I'm even, maybe my system's cheaper then. Because well, I had $180 each. No, they're $179 a pair. Oh. That's why every time people are like, Sony, I'm like, Fluence. Right. <laughs> they're so much better. Well, yeah, yeah, totally. So, so $180. I, I, bucks. So my cheap, my cheap, this system is actually going to be less expensive than okay. I had calculated. Because I have made the mistake before mm-hmm. by it, when we've done these types of videos where I have not realize that something is charged by, you know, individually, mm-hmm. and, you know, blown my budget in the process. Okay. So anyway, we're, I'm going with four XL8 bookshelves. Okay. So two in the front, two in the back. So for that's $360 readers. for four. Uh, thank you for doing the math. Cause I'm <laughs> really bad at that. Uh, they make a matching center. Mm-hmm. Uh, that's 150 bucks. Okay. Oh, wow. Yeah. You're going to be way under. Yeah. So then you can either go with a 10-inch subwoofer from Fluence mm-hmm. or they have a 12-inch subwoofer. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then I threw in an Apple TV 4K okay. as well. Yeah. Uh, so what's, you, what's the receiver? The Marantz. Oh, you're going oh, Marantz yeah. for oh, both Yeah, Marantz all day. Okay, they, Marantz they are, all day. Uh, if, if, wow. So you're going to be, let's see, three, what is it? What did I say? 360 plus how much was the center? Okay, just to give you an idea... Okay. Originally, I was counting these individual, the speakers individually. Yeah. So I had my four speakers priced at seven hundred twenty dollars, which is, which is not accurate because it's sold by the pair. Yeah. So with the ten inch subwoofer uh-huh. and my seven hundred twenty dollars speakers, mm-hmm. which isn't seven twenty, it was coming in at twenty two sixty nine for the whole smash. For the whole smash. If yeah, you you're get, if be... you went up to the 12 inch sub, it was coming in at 2418. So you're gonna just take off what about 300 dollars? Yeah, so from you're gonna be under two grand. You're gonna be under two grand. That's a good system. Yeah, I think it's a good system. 
Yeah. The first system, I didn't include the Apple TV just because I figure that most modern day televisions include streaming st- built in apps. Mm hmm. Um, I mean, I do prefer Apple TV, you know, the external device. Yeah, it is. I will say if you have no other choice, but then what, you know, the built in apps that are in your television, use them. I mean, you paid for them. They're there. Might as well use them. But there is a bit of a difference, a demonstrable one, actually, in stepping up to an outboard streamer like an Apple TV or like an NVIDIA Shield. Um this isn't, we, I don't want to get into the whole debate over well, physical media versus streaming. Forget all that stuff. But there are, there are noticeable differences between using built in uh, apps and separate streamers. Yeah. So, but you know, if you want to, if you need to save a little bit of money and, mm-hmm. you know, that $200 for the Apple TV can mm-hmm. go somewhere else, you know, you can always add that later down the road. But yeah. anyway, those are my systems. I think you did very well, but the, you know what? The, the question, the real, I mean, the only real question is, Hey guys, who did, who did better? I did it. I did it this time. I did, I did better. <laughs> it's okay. If, if you won this one, I, it's all right. I she can... will be fine. If for once you side with me. <laughs> <laughs> if for let's once, give one to Andrew. Yeah, I you will. Know, we can throw him a bone yeah. every now and then. I don't. I feel like this is a bit of a tie. Um, what? <laughs> <laughs> I come with five dynamite systems, and you're like, I'm gonna give you two, but it's really only the only two you need. Well, look. <laughs> so. Time. You originally said you were going to do three so that I could provide two, that there would be a total of five. So you just cheated from the beginning. No, so no, I'm not, no. I don't feel sorry for I you was, at all. I said I was going to do three so you could do two. And then while I was oh, writing. Oh, yeah, you were going to give me two no, of your no, systems. No, while That's was, what you said. While I was writing don't this. Don't listen to this bullshit guys <laughs> while he's, I was writing this, you said, I don't think I can do he's this. He's trying to rewrite history here. I am not. I am not. Uh huh. Uh Anyway, anyway, we gave you some good systems, regardless, regardless of of, which ones you believe uh, are the fact that I did better. It's all fine. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, man, I love these videos. These are these are fun. I mean, they're all fun. But anyway, uh, well, is there anything else? All right, guys. So those are your what are we up? Seven, five plus seven. seven, seven. Complete home theater systems that you can go out and get right now for under twenty five hundred bucks. But don't try trying to research it for yourself because <laughs> I've got the links for you in the description. We've done. We've been working on this video for a minute, so we've you we've, can, we've done you our can homework. Use the links, and you'll and well, I mean, my luck, they won't be on on sale anymore yeah. by the time the video goes live. But that is outside of our control. Yeah. But. Anyway, these are seven really great systems for less than some of the sound bars we've had on this channel. Not to take anything away from sound bars, you know I love them. But for those of you who are like, you can get an actual system for less, here's seven options. So if you're in the market, on the market, uh, for a complete home theater, uh, I would highly recommend looking into these because they are really, really good. And I think... If you go into them with an open mind, you may actually be surprised by just the sheer level of performance that you're able to achieve for under 2,500 bucks. So that's it for us. If you like this video, please do give it a thumbs up, like, and subscribe. Go ahead and ring that bell so that you're notified when new videos come out. If you use any of the links that Christy has reminded you or down in the (laughs) description, know that that is a great way that you have continued to show your support for this channel and the work that we do here. And both of us, thank you very much for doing that. Follow me on Instagram at Recovering Audiophile, and that is it for us today. So remember, the only person who has to like the sound of your system is you. So happy listening, everybody. Thank you so much for watching. We'll see you on the next video. Bye.